Good morning, good morning, good morning. I think this is starting up. Um, let's see. Okay, I think I'm live. I'm trying out this um, live producer one more time here um, on the internet. I haven't been able to switch to the old uh, old style of going live. So I hope you guys can hear me and see me. It took a little bit of time to get going. So happy Monday. Um, hope you had, well, it's still the long weekend here it's um been anzac day um on the weekend and thus today is a public holiday so um i'm excited to talk to you about uh hey susie uh great to see you obviously it's working and i'm live but it's having little conniptions every now and again um the live stream so uh vivi if you're there i can see you there uh could you please share this live in our um main groups ultimate business support also your way to riches and in our ultimate 48 hours a mastermind group so i thought i'd come on and talk hey jay um i thought i'd uh, come on and talk about the various different things that have been happening um within the last four weeks within our business because uh, we have had to move our whole international and national tour online and there's certainly been a lot of lessons and learnings i shared some of these in my secret authors group but a lot of people have been asking around the internet what kind of stuff um you know how do you how long should an online seminar be or a webinar or you know how do you keep people engaged are they willing to stay longer or shorter or whatever it is and i always say um, look, people will stay so long as there is value, so long as, you know, they're engaged, you're giving them uh, appropriate breaks and, um, you know, you're asking questions and you're, you're mixing things up. So I thought I'd jot, uh, I jotted down about 15 different things that um, I have seen that have has been working. Um, you know, the first couple of um, workshops that I did online uh, felt really awkward and unfamiliar and it's like, oh, I don't like this. This doesn't work for me uh, because I'm a face-to-face -face kind of person. But I'm, I must say by persisting and I guess being forced into having to repetitively deliver what I have promised to people, um, I got more and more comfortable with it, uh, better at managing my energy because it's so different giving your energy to a computer screen versus um, when you have the people in the room uh, because one of the early mistakes in the first couple of um, seminars that I did online was that I was trying to do things that I would do in my um, real life workshop and that was um, uh, that felt weird and and, it, and after that first time I did it I just literally looked at my PowerPoint presentation and I, I ripped it apart and took slides out and kind of rejected so it suits more that online style of delivery. So here's um, a list of things to consider if you do do um, uh, a lot of online stuff right now or you're wanting to do it as to how you too can engage um, your audience and if there's questions or if you have been doing some stuff that has been working um, for yourself and your communities, please share them with you with us um, in the comments box and I'd love to have some more trips and uh, tips and hacks and all that kind of stuff. First of all, if I... Um, if I can say um, it, the length does not matter how long, like people have this, um, I think it's a limiting belief, just like I had a limiting belief that my stuff can't work online. It's a limiting belief, good morning, Teresa, um, that um, a particular online um, lesson or seminar or whatever delivery has to be a specific time and you need to keep it short because people's attention spans online are a lot um, lower. I haven't found that in my half-day workshop. I haven't found that in my full-day online masterclasses that I like run for my clients. And soon I'll be running my, in two, two weeks, I'll be running two back-to-back -back retreats, which will go for three days. Um, of course, not not the full three days, but, you know, there's going to be six hours in one day, eight hours in the next, and then five hours on the last day. All right, so number one tip is start early okay so ask your participants and your audience to pop on the call about 10 minutes before its official starting time this is not only um uh, to check techies and just make sure everything is working and that you're you know uh, people can find the chat box which are all things that are really important to make sure are working but it's also uh, 10 minutes to build rapport and get to know who's on the call where you're from um say hello share some you know small talk if you like and um and go from there like um it does really make a big difference um when you do start the call you kind of know who's there now i know it's very uh, good morning jenny um 
So I know it's difficult, um, uh, you know, to talk to every single person, but, you know, those people who have their cameras on and that's another thing, like make sure you get people on video because what the video does, it makes them stay engaged. It makes them look at other people and kind of there's something else to also look at and um, interact with and, and you can see their expressions on their faces and you can actually comment on that because people might be laughing or might put their hand up because if you're actually wanting a response of um, uh, yes or no or whatever it is, you know, you can actually get them to do gestures rather than use the chat box. So it's really, really um, important that they're on camera. Um, how I frame it, uh, I mean, I already tell them in the lead up emails of the event, um, this is what I want you to do. Uh, not everyone's going to do it, but I have been having 80 to 90% um, uh, uh, compliance rate. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, compliance rate in terms of people who are uh, putting their videos on and getting in on the fun and, and looking at, at everyone else and um, kind of, you know, feeling like they're in a room uh, full of people and they have been actually remembering each other. So, for example, when um, when I speak to some people and I take them off mute, what, what happens is, um, you know, after the event, let's say some people have come into our community, how I've noticed is like, oh, yeah, I remember you from our call and you're from our town or city and all that kind of stuff. Good morning, Mo. So really, really important, um, you know, use people's names, right? Because it's, uh, on Zoom, you can see um, people's names and um, comments. And if they come up as gibberish, you can rename them as the host. You can ask, what's your what's your actual name? So I'm not calling you, um, <laughs> you know, uh, hey, Christine, so I'm not calling you odd things. So um, rename them and make sure everyone's got their names co uh, correctly. Our seminars have been ranging between 30 and 40 people. So it's been busy. You know, there have been hundreds because then that, that's a different dynamic and you would handle it differently. But I'm talking about the more intimate ones, up to 30 or 40 people, you can definitely make some make things um you know a lot more uh engaging and it can really feel like it's a little group learning together which is exactly what it's felt like you can also see people's expressions on their faces so often in my half day workshop you know there's times that i make them laugh and all that and like i can see the people that i'm presenting to you know they'll have similar reactions and i try to feed off that for myself um to uh keep going and just imagining that i'm in that uh, physical room doing it with the people and that they're having a very similar experience to that. Um, all right, so uh, encourage participants. So start early, build rapport, chat with people off mute, just like kind of just say a couple of things and then put them back on mute. Make sure you, that, that you control the muting and unmuting because there is an option where you allow participants to unmute themselves and this can create havoc, yeah? So make sure that you have the only control to be able to mute and unmute people. Um, encourage participants to be on video, which we've already covered. Send a thank you email during the event. So our thank you email with some resources and our call to action even and, and our details on what we're offering is actually sent just before we go to our coffee break for 20 minutes, yeah? Because then in the chat box, uh, one of my team Type type stuff. Hey guys, the thank you email has been sent. Please check, check your inbox, your spam or junk, just in case it's ended up in there. Because if you don't have it, then we'll resend it to you. That way, actually, it kind of closes off and you've sent what you have promised to them because we send things that we're talking about during the event. But also at the same time, you know, you've got something there for them to look at during the break. This is obviously in a situation where you will have a break, right? So in terms of length of um, uh, um, focus time, I would say to keep it to 90 minutes and then you go on a 20-minute break, 30 minutes if you can afford even to have that longer break and then come back in and then get people to leave the meeting. Just say switch off your camera or go off, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be all on mute, um, you know, and we'll come back on. And I usually come back before break ends five minutes. So in that five minutes before the break ends, I come back on camera and some people may have returned and I just, again, continue to build rapport and have a bit of a chit chat, have my coffee and I'm kind of, kind of like still on break, you know, um, before we officially hit a record to continue on with the next session. I stop and start the recording according to where the official parts of the seminar are, so I don't record the rapport building and all that kind of stuff um, and um, and pause when we go on break and unpause and continue on. So in Zoom, just so you know, if you pause the recording, you will end up with one big um, uh, video at the end. If you stop it and you start it, you're going to end up, you'll break it down to multiple videos. So it just depends 
how you want it. I prefer to keep it in one video so then it's easy one upload and then I also send the recording to the meeting participants just in case they've dropped off, they've come in uh, um, late into the call and missed some stuff and or um, have had to uh, drop off early because of something they had to do. So it's really nice that you do also do a follow-up email where you send the recording and that's really, really appreciated. Okay, so uh have your course to act okay so you have your course to action clearly set up and easy to follow so being online it's not like um offline where someone can come up to you at the end of the event talk to you about what you've just presented and all that kind of stuff it's very techy um uh you need to be tech savvy and well connected in terms of what you're going to do so for our uh call to action was to uh have a conversation with these people who are interested to write a book and then needed to book through a Calendly link, uh, which was which is an online scheduling uh, software, which has questions and uh, creates their Zoom link for the meeting, sends them reminders. It just has this whole backend um, support system that makes it so easy. It's one link, you click and you take it through the whole process and you get reminded. And to tell you the truth, I've only had one no-show out of, I'm trying to remember now, 70 or 80 calls in the last four weeks that I have had through that um, through that way. Some people have may have cancelled or rescheduled and that's fine, but um, I haven't like, you know, people haven't been taking away the time and then like, you know, kind of not treating it with respect because obviously this wasn't a paid call, like where, you know, you turn up, you paid for something and all that sort of stuff. It was a break, author breakthrough session or discussion point on, um, on what we could, how we could help people. So make sure your call to action stuff is really well set up. If they need to go to a website, if they need to register for a call, all that sort of stuff, nice and clear send it in the thank you email um of course talk about it in the call put it in the chat box and get those um step, steps happening so it's nice and smooth after the fact okay uh share your screen and move into brady bunch mode so you, you guys would have seen lots over the internet lots of people sharing their meetings via zoom and you can see them all like in a tile kind of um set up um and we call that now the brady bunch mode i think it came from one lady who mentioned that in the la workshop uh, right at the beginning that was the second workshop we ran and it's become the brady bunch photo and all that kind of stuff so um what i like to do is because when you put people on um, um a powerpoint uh you can only see like five people across the top who are part of the call and one of them might be you and you can flick through the rest of them but you can't see everyone right so I like to uh, become, I have become very comfortable in moving from PowerPoint back to just normal seeing everyone because you can see 25 people when you're in Brady Bunch mode and you can go to the second page and you can just ask questions and get people to come off mute and all that kind of stuff. So it really makes it super easy to, um, to just see people's faces and how interacting. So go back and forward from this mode. So at the beginning of a call, you know, when we're still building rapport, we don't share no PowerPoint, nothing. We're just kind of seeing each other and talking to each other. When I need to ask a question and stop and take someone off mute, I'll take, stop my presentation. And again, before break, after break, at the end in Q&A, really, really important. So, um, so yeah, because it, the limitation of PowerPoint is that you can only see a few people at the top and um, that, you know, sort of some people miss out, you know, and you only have some to focus on. So it's really, really great if you can just kind of re-engage them back together as a group. Okay, so ask for interaction in the chat box. Um, usually because it takes a lot longer to type something up for some people, um, I say to them, by the way, having your team on the call so or another person that can help you manage the call um it doesn't have to be everyone like we've got four people it's me Stuart, viv and lindy from the philippines so we have a lot of hands on deck managing questions any techie stuff um you know Stuart is co-presenting part of it but if you can have one other person just being there supporting you so that you can focus on presenting right because what I do is I need to get in the zone to share the content and the lessons and the teachings that I need to. And I don't want to be reading in the chat box because it is very, very distracting. I can multitask and I've, I'll do that really well, but I choose not to. So I don't stop and start and stop and start and keep mentioning all that kind of stuff. So sort of get through content. So what I say is if you have questions throughout the call, put them there. Someone will answer them because Viv and Stuart are there and they can answer those kind of questions very easily. They'll say the exact same thing that I would say. But when I ask for interaction as the speaker, I generally ask for a yes or a no or a one word answer, 
something that's just one word that's really quick to uh, type up and then i kind of repeat the question a second time um just to give them enough um um uh, what's it called um enough time to type something up because it can be that lag and it's that uncomfortable silence okay guys so who thinks that at all tell me what the answer is so or i also pre-frame it in a moment i'm gonna ask you to type up in the chat box the answer to this and, da -da -da and so on so it's just so elongate the way you say it so there's no like kind of um you know, uh, uh, cut off time um or or uncomfortable silence that you um you might experience um you know while people are typing something up and some people are going to be interactive and some people are not going to be interactive and that's okay um and you can manage that and this is where also having your team on on hand can actually get the interaction going or ask a question there and they could have also um a side conversation happening uh with the team at the same time and your team can monitor as well uh things um that are going on there because and manage it we actually had a, a troll on one of our online seminars um who was very very um uh disruptive to the whole seminar and um my husband Stuart really managed them well if i would known that you can actually remove a person from a call i would have done that uh but i learned that after the fact and but we managed it really well and actually it created this polarization where um, with um the rest of the group were like i'm loving this, this is the best da, 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 da. like you know just keep going all that sort of stuff and then when we had one-on-one -on -one calls with some of them they were like saying oh my god you guys handled that so well and they were all really positive and um supportive and actually it was a good thing that happened rather than going oh but i really had to manage my state because it ha started happening before the break and then this person wouldn't leave the call and i said you can have a refund if you're not getting what you want uh, what you signed up to get then i'm can i give you a refund no 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 so they stay till the end of the call just to um you know be uh you know whatever they needed to get out of it uh but nevertheless um you know i had to continue managing my state while stuff was happening in the chat box um and uh, my husband and team were supporting me um at the same time yep so i just focused did it and we had amazing results it was probably one of the best events um and in terms of results from it uh that we ended up having so don't let that kind of stuff shake you just um oh there's been so many comments that have been coming up this little box doesn't um it doesn't actually um scroll up so i've just scrolled up and um um yeah how do you know when to take a person off mute from caroline sorry guys i didn't even notice there was all these comments this new way of doing live just annoying me i want the old way back <laughs> um i how do you know um well hi actually caroline this is a really good one um how do you know that to take a person off mute well sometimes they kind of just you might say okay who would like to tell me what they're writing about what's their biggest challenge about writing a book what, what will happen if you do nothing about it let's find out a little bit about you guys so who would like to have a go and sometimes you have everyone just sitting there and just looking and no one um um no one actually saying um like putting their hand up or doing anything and you need to kind of force it upon someone like and do it in a funny way okay well if no one's going to talk and go first i'm just going to pick a beautiful face here that i can see in front of me and talk to them and then i'll go caroline that's you let's talk to you how are you today and just be really really friendly build rapport and um they have to talk like this is this has been put on the spot but if you do it with the right intention um you're not going to feel uncomfortable and you're not going to kind of like go, oh, it's awkward. You know, like everyone's looking at you, everyone's waiting. So you just gotta kind of be on the spot, like kind of, okay, we're gonna talk to whatever. So that's how I do it. Otherwise, of course, when there's an interactive group, you cannot have enough hands up. Um, and online guys, it's the same as offline, right? You're gonna have the um, uh, people who are like, uh, the groups that are like just like absolutely really flatlining um and then the groups that are like ah! <laughs> you know you can't keep up and uh, you know it's amazing when that happens because of course you know it just makes the energy of the whole thing happen but then um you know of course um you want to where hi where do you confirm the time for this um uh what do you mean Kaz? what do you mean uh, like what do you confirm the time for this 
Um, I don't understand that question. So can you please repeat it? And you can say exactly that, what just happened now. You know, I'm not understanding this. Can you clarify it in a different way and go from there? All right, let me make sure I've gone through some of the other things on my on my list here. Okay, so ask, ask for interaction in the chat box. One would answer if it, uh, so it's quicker. Have your team online to pick up questions while you deliver content, which we already talked about. Um, Kaz, oh, okay, this is my live stream for my personal profile that happens at 9 a.m. every Monday morning. At 9.30, I'm going to be in our secret uh, Facebook group, which is going to be the author-specific one. So there's two lives that happen on Monday back-to-back, -back, one for the public and one for my uh, author group. And you don't have to confirm anything. You just rock up at that time every week. All right, cool. So, um uh, have regular breaks. We talked about the 90 minutes. So when I do my full day online masterclass, we do 90 minutes content, 30 minute morning tea, 90 minutes content, one hour lunch break, 90 minutes content, 30 minutes uh, afternoon tea, 90 minutes content. Uh, keep the lighter stuff uh, towards the end if you're doing a full day uh, thing uh, because say after 3.30 items, uh, people are starting to, the energy is dipping and they're probably also, um, just like in any seminar, this is not nothing to do with online, offline as well. Um, it um, basically people start to phase out because they're either overwhelmed with information and content that you have shared to them. So therefore they need something more lighter towards the end of the day, something fun or something that'll just um, break things up. Now it is really good if it's possible to co-present um, and switch it up so different people are talking at different times, right? So this is why Stuart introduces the call. He also talks before break. Sometimes my, my authors jump on a call and actually give us a testimonial or um, you know sort of talk to the audience about their experience and all that kind of stuff and so different people coming off mute also mixes up the voices um, and um, keeps the attention span higher for those listening and oh I'm hearing from someone else let's see what they have got, got to say so that is very very powerful okay so um having regular breaks find out about your audience and refer back to examples you learn from the audience so this initial thing where in the beginning of the call i get to know people i take them off mute tell me what you're writing about you know why you're writing it you know all that kind of stuff i refer back to those the two or three people that maybe i get to know in that segment i will refer back throughout the content to give examples so people can link it up to what we spoke about and how what i'm speaking about links together and of course if i have found out stuff about through the chat box about the person writing this book or whatever it is i'll do my best to link up examples and stories or what i'm teaching to those people that are there on the call right because it makes it more personal and more customized right okay so um next one is um dress um and background really really important if you don't have a media banner it doesn't matter as long as your background is nice and neat and of course with the power of the zoom virtual backgrounds now everyone can have a background um you can see my uh top um we have all also made ourselves branded uh t-shirts and tops and we're all wearing them um online you can be more casual than um uh, than offline offline i'd be wearing my pretty dresses and be all dolled up and all that in front of the stage and all that kind of stuff. Um, I find everyone's a lot more casual when they're at home and also that could also be you being more in rapport with the audience who at the, the other end are also more chilled out and in a in a comfort place. So, um, you know, so so I have found it works really well, but everyone in the team also looking, um, you know, on brand is important. At the very least, if you don't want to do um, the... Um, the background um you know do have just just have it very nice and neat and um and simple and all that kind of stuff so just think about what that means for your business like nice flowers or something along those lines not too busy yeah mine is busy because i've got lots of books and that's ex exactly what my business and brand is about um but um it's also like consistent uh, across the board all right so um uh just some background yeah okay so next one is if you, you have 
props in your business um, or workbooks or manuals or something, you know, because I've got books, right? And I want to show different things in different books or certain cover or I'm talking about this or my author who is perhaps on the call, I've got their book here next to me to show it to the audience and all that. So I've got like a stack of books and planners and things that I always lift up and um, um, this is, a April, this is um, a, a media banner. It's actually not a, a virtual background because virtual backgrounds make you look uh, funny when your hair moves and, um, yeah, they just cut things off. They're not as natural looking as what this is. But this is, yeah, massive, like three metres, but to <laughs> takes up the whole room. I push it back, though, uh, at the end um, um, when I'm not presenting. But I do pull it forward. It's kind of only like a metre behind me, uh, so it, it takes up the whole screen. All right, so um, uh, use props if you have them. So show stuff, you know, um, you know, lift it up or you might have like if you're doing a program for people and there is a manual for that program or you get this and you get that and or here's the book and da da da, da or I, I show examples of a laminated mock-up cover. So I have all my bits and pieces here and then again it switches up them just looking at your face and I do use my hands and I do talk and express myself and um and make funny noises and I sit and I make gestures and all that kind of stuff. I do all of that kind of stuff um, um, just as I would do in the no normal workshop and that's what I feel like it, it changes, switches things up for people. All right, so what else do I have here? Imagine you're there with them. Um, uh, hands up works well and uh, mentioning things that you see on video. You know, I can see a few of you nodding or you're laughing. And da, 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 da. I just can't, kind of just talk about what's going on and what I can see. Um, and I can see them smirking or laughing or, um, you know, just use that encouragement. And, um, and one of the last things that I have jotted down here is have some of your clients jump on the call as a testimonial. So that's kind of another um, another thing, you know, that's very powerful. It's not like you saying, oh, we're so good, we're so good, we're so good. Um, if you have other people who've been through the, your uh, program or experience or whatever you, you do recently, you know, why not? And you don't have to have them there for the whole call. It could be just for a 10-minute thing. Here's the link, you know, jump on at that time, take you off mute and all that and um um, you know, we'll ask these questions and you can sort of say what you want to talk about. Um, and some, some clients have chosen to come and stay for the whole duration of our seminars just to learn from them, um, you know, how, how it unfolds and to model those steps and, um, you know, and be there for further support and actually be part of the team and be answering questions in the, in the chat box of what I'm talking about when people need more clarity. So those are the things that have um, worked amazingly. Tomorrow is our next um, last, well, not next and last, well, out of the series of these 12, 13 um, uh, sem half-day seminars we've run for the last four weeks, it's our last in that block, if you like, um, and I'm ready to have a break from them. However, it's not a very, it's not a break from doing online stuff. It's basically we're moving into our full day products for profit masterclass on the 6th of May. We've got a three day retreat for our US clients, 8th to the 10th of May. Then we've got a three day retreat for the Australian clients from the 15th to 17th of May. So perhaps maybe in a month's time, I can do a Monday morning live in terms of the lessons I've learned when running like a full blown program um, online with your clients. And I'm, I'm planning some uh, funky, fun kind of other activities for those particular ones because in those ones, You've already got a lot of rapport with your people. Yeah, they're, they're investing in a high at a high level with you, um, and yeah, all your team and everyone's hands on deck in terms of delivering the actual um, content for the solution that purchased to get from you, right? So that could be a cool little live that we can do. Um, um, that, um, you know, um, at that time. Uh, if any of you do and have never been to my half day seminar, by all means, you know, I'll post the link up for the one tomorrow if you want to kind of jump on that one if you want to come along. Or um, there's going to be two, one for US and one for Australia on the 26th of May. Two days after my birthday, we're doing one on the 26th in Australia, but then 26th in the US because it's going to be the 27th here. So what I'll do is at the end of this call, um, when I get off, um, I'll get those couple of um, uh, 
links for those two events posted. If you want to join uh, us in one of them, that would be awesome. Uh, <laughs> I found uh, playing Pictionary a way to build rapport. That's awesome. I love it. All right, Joe, I'll see you in the Secret Authors group. Yes, we're about to close off. It's nearly 9.30. I've got to swap, switch channels, switch groups. Have an amazing week, whatever you're doing. Take away from this um, uh, some stuff that um, applies to you and that you've liked and go, I can do that. Um, and uh, cater and start doing um, your events um, and stuff online so that you can have that as a wonderful option to be able to continue building your business. And um, I think uh, with the experience we have had, there's going to be a certain aspect of our business that will stay online um, and perhaps maybe we'll do 75%, 25% um, because we have really enjoyed it and um, and it's working really well and uh, it's not too different. Um, of course, face-to-face -face is um, more personal. You get to know people, build rapport a lot faster, um, but um, online has been just as powerful and um, moving people through through how we can help them as well in the process. Have an amazing week and smash it out. <laughs>